Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern Health Span. The Interventions Testing Program, or ITP, of the NIA has released a paper with their results from the 2017 cohort of mice. As it says in the title, they saw a lifespan benefit from a combination of rapamycin and acarbose and captopril, with the best result showing a 37% extension of median lifespan. In this video, we will go through the paper and look at what they found. In this study, the ITP tested six interventions, 1,3-butanodiol, captopril, leucine, the NRF2 activator, PB125, sulinodac, syringoresinol, and a combination of rapamycin and acarbose started at either nine or 16 months. In male mice, rapamycin and acarbose started at nine months, did better than rapamycin on its own from previous cohorts. Whereas for female mice, they did not see an improvement on rapamycin alone. Captopril saw a small increase in female lifespan, though possibly not in males. This was also complicated because one of the sites saw low survival rates in their controls, which we will discuss a bit later. Butanodiol saw a small increase in females, and none of the other interventions showed a significant improvement. The study did show that a combination of therapies like rapamycin and acarbose could have additive effects, and further investigation of captopril could be rewarding. Before we go into the data in more detail, what is the intervention testing program? It is a program run by the NIA to identify agents which extend lifespan and healthspan in mice. They use genetically heterogeneous mice rather than the inbred genetically identical mice often used in labs, with the idea that this will provide a more generally applicable result. Also, they test in three sites simultaneously, the Jackson Lab, the University of Michigan, and the University of Texas Health Science Center, so that the reproducibility is covered in the original test. The substances to be tested are requested by various groups, and the teams that propose the interventions are involved in developing the test protocols. In the paper, they provide a brief overview of the interventions that they have previously shown to extend lifespan. Let's quickly go through these. They have tested 35, found 8 that increased lifespan, and none that shortened it. Five of these only worked in males. These were NDGA, 17-alpha-estradiol, protandim, and canagliflozin. So far, none have increased lifespan in females only. The three that increased lifespan in both sexes, though with varying degrees of efficacy, were glycine, acarbose, and rapamycin. Here is a bit more detail on the six that were chosen for this study. 1,3-butanodiol is a precursor to beta-hydroxybutyrate, a ketone body that has been reported to improve aging in brain and heart. Catopril is an ACE inhibitor. ACE inhibitors cause blood vessels to relax and are used for treatment of hypertension. Captopril extended lifespan in C. elegans and other ACE inhibitors have been shown to extend lifespan in rodents. Leucine is one of the branch chain amino acids and has been reported to extend lifespan in yeast, C. elegans, and mice, as well as increase insulin sensitivity and muscle protein synthesis in older people. PB125 is a formulation of rosemary extract, ashwagandha, and luteolin, which has been reported to activate NRF2 more strongly than protandim, a substance tested earlier by the ITP and shown to increase lifespan. Sulindac is an NSAID, like aspirin and ibuprofen. And syringa resinol is a component of ginseng berry, which has extended lifespan in worms and flies. All the results are divided by gender, as there does seem to be sex-specific differences in many of them. First, for the females. The first column is the intervention, with CONT17 being the controls. The next two columns are the count of mice in each group and the median lifespan in days. The percent change in the median lifespan. The log rank is a calculation which determines the p-value for a set of survival data. So we are looking for a number less than 0.05 to show significance in this column. The most significant results were the two rapamycin acarbose combinations. RAAC9 and RAAC16. 
RAAC9 was started at nine months, which is about equivalent to a 40-year-old human. And RAC16 was started at 16 months, about 63 years old for a human. The RAAC9 saw a 28% increase, and the RAAC16 saw a 12%, both with a very low p-value. Captopril had a change of 5%. Butanidiol was just 1%. None of the other interventions were significant to either increase or decrease lifespan. Switching to the males, we saw a larger improvement in rapamycin cohorts of 37 and 14% for the 9 and 16 month treatment respectively. A better improvement in captopril of 14%. But no significant change in BD, and again, no other interventions were significant. Here are the survival curves for the rapamycin and acarbose groups. The other graphs for the other substances showed very little variation from the controls, so I have not shown these. There was an issue with the study, though, in that the controls at the University of Texas had much lower than normal lifespan. This graph is showing the median lifespan for the controls over a number of years at the three centers. The red asterisk shows the median lifespan for the 2017 cohort at the University of Texas. We can see it is below the expected range. This has the impact of making the survival of the interventions group look better when compared to that of the controls. The team could not determine the course of the unexpectedly short lifespan for the controls, but they did decide to analyze the data from the other two sites after removing the data from UT. In the paper, they do caution that it is not good scientific practice to use this kind of post hoc analysis, but wanted to present both sets of data, given the anomalous numbers from the control group at UT. So here are the results without the University of Texas group. Again, first for females. Rapamycin anacarbos was still significant, though with smaller results, from 28 to 22% and from 12 to 10%. Captopril was still significant with a slight reduction in percentage change to 4%. However, the improvement in lifespan with butanodiol was no longer significant. For the males, rapamycin anacarbose was still significant, though the median lifespan for the RAAC16 group was the same as the control group, though there was a bump in life expectancy past 1,000 days and the median for the RAAC9 changed from 37 to 29%. Captopril was no longer significant, nor was butanodiol. Here are the graphs for the rapamycin and acarbose groups calculated without the University of Texas data. Here we can see the increase in lifespan after 1,000 days for the male group started on the intervention at the 16th month. One other question that they looked at was how did rapamycin anacarbose in combination compare to rapamycin only? Here are, we are comparing the results of this study with those from previous studies in mice from 2006 and 2009, which used only rapamycin. In both cases, the treatment was started at the same time, which is the ninth month. Using the number from the two sites, we see that it was an improvement from 10 or 5% to 19% in males, and from 18 to 20% in females. Comparing just the lifespan of the treatment group rather than percent change over the controls also showed a significant improvement in lifespan for rapamycin and acarbose groups to that of rapamycin only. It is a pity that there was anomalous results from the University of Texas, as it makes interpretation harder. The original data with the suspect results could be overly optimistic, but the data from only two of the sites has the danger that this is cherry picking to show the results that are expected. In both cases, rapamycin and acarbose together did clearly seem to provide lifespan benefits, and in the paper, they discuss possible mechanisms for why the two compounds could be synergistic. I also thought it was interesting to see that 1,3-butanodiol, a source of ketones, tended towards life extension. And leucine, a branched-chain amino acid and activator of mTOR, was included and while not showing any benefits, also did not have a significant negative impact. I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you again soon. <music>